Good morning, Chairman Cox and members of the board. The Public Safety Group and Health and Human Services Agency remain committed to working with local partners to address the complex mental health and substance use disorder needs of our community. Today, we will be presenting on items two and five. Rachel Saul will, will speak to the Mental Health Diversion Program, and Dr. Luke Bergman will provide an update on the Behavioral Health Continuum of Care. At this time, we'll turn over to, to Dr. Luke Bergman, Director of the Behavioral Health Services. Thanks, Dean. As we will discuss later this morning during the COVID update, recent data has indicated trends in population-level mental health and shifts in service utilization associated with the, with the COVID-19 pandemic that compel us to respond. The overarching goal of our continuum of care efforts remains the same, to achieve a transformational shift from a model of care driven by crises to one driven by chronic or continuous care and prevention. But with the COVID-19 pandemic, the care and service landscape has changed dramatically, and this calls for adjustments to our strategic and tactical approaches. First, based on recent economic trends, we anticipate our funding sources will be adversely impacted. We'll have fewer financial resources with which to drive change, and we need to think about different kinds of and differently sized investments. Second, federal and state regulatory authorities have enabled the rapid expansion of innovative ways of working, such as telehealth, that may increase the reach of current services by providing access to care in patients' homes and community settings. Third, uncertainty about the future epidemiology of COVID-19 and potential surges in hospital bed need for COVID-19 care directs us toward an approach in the immediate term that is less dependent upon devotion of hospital system resources. In the near term, therefore, we're putting on hold large capital investments in hospital infrastructure, which have been key taxa, tactics in our continuum work, and are instead focusing on investments that yield more immediate impacts on maintaining hospital availability for COVID response while keeping people connected to behavioral health care and while extending our reach to the many people not currently getting care that they need. To do this, we'll be focusing on either end of the continuum, on diversionary services that keep people out of acute care on the front end, and on long-term care and support on the back end. We'll continue our focus on coordinating care across clinical and non-clinical settings. Much of what we'll be presenting today has been in motion since the board conference of 2018. In future updates to your board, we'll be discussing initiatives that have been developed specifically to address COVID-related needs and dynamics around behavioral health. Much of this is being supported through $15 million in CARES Act funding, which has been allocated to support telehealth infrastructure and other COVID-related response. The future update will have the same framework that we emphasize today, but with additional attention paid to ensuring that there are equitable and judiciously designed services across the county's varied and diverse demographics. Reflecting the important intersection of public health and public safety, we think of diversionary services as those that keep people out of avoidable, expensive healthcare and also as services that help people avoid unnecessary involvement in the criminal justice system. Single contacts with these services may often have positive impacts on both fronts. Last March, your board approved a recommendation to establish a regional mental health uh, crisis stabilization units, or CSUs, that provide 24-7 walk-in and law enforcement transported uh, services for those in behavioral health crisis. Driven by the urgency of need, our initial focus has been on North County. Though it has met repeated delays owing to community siting resistance, the North Coastal community-based CSU in Vista is progressing. The provider, Exodus, is in contact with the Vista City Planning Department and planning for necessary tenant improvements is already underway. We anticipate operations commencing as early as late fall. The North Coastal Live Well Health Center community-based CSU in Oceanside continues to move forward with construction expected to commence by the end of 2020. Meanwhile, your board approved actions on May 19th to expand the hospital-based CSU at Palomar Hospital. This includes a move into a new facility that is adjacent to the ED and increasing the size of the service from eight to 16 recliners. We are happy to report that the ribbon cutting went really well last week and services commenced July 2nd. Palomar CSU will be up to full capacity by the end of this calendar year. 
The most recent efforts on this front are in the South region, where a hospital-based CSU has moved through program design phases, which will result in recommended actions that will be presented to this board in the near future. Approved by your board in June of 2019, the establishment of a non-law enforcement mobile crisis response team pilot was set for procurement and then met delays owing to community siting issues mentioned above and highlighted at the last meeting of your board. With additional attention being paid and a call for additional resources being devoted to this service, we're making some design adjustments to expedite program implementation and anticipate that a competitive procurement will be issued for the services early in this fiscal year, enabling this program to inform the scaling of mobile crisis response teams across the county over the course of the year. A separate item, item two, brought before your board today outlines the county's desire to launch a mental health diversion program in response to a funding opportunity put forward by the Department of State Hospitals. This work fits neatly into overall strategic emphases that I've described, and to explain it in detail, I'd like to hand it over to Rachel Soloff. Good morning. As you know, in 2018, <clears throat> District Attorney Summer Steffen hosted two stakeholder symposiums to map when mental health issues intersect with the criminal justice system. Several recommendations came from those two symposiums and were documented in the Blueprint for Mental Health Reform, including enhanced de-escalation training, community-based crisis stabilization, and non-law enforcement mobile crisis response. An additional very important recommendation was to create guidelines and structure for mental health diversion that ensures public safety, as well as equal access and equitable treatment for participants. I'm excited to be here today to talk with you about the program we have created, which is item number two on your agenda. Before I discuss our local proposal, I wanna briefly set the framework for our conversation by reviewing California's mental health diversion law. Mental health diversion, codified in Penal Code Section 1001.36, was part of a budget trailer bill that went into effect on July 1, 2018. Distilled to its simplest terms, mental health diversion may be granted to those who have any DSM-recognized mental health diagnosis when their charges are significantly rated, related to their mental illness. There are three diagnoses which are excluded from diversion, antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and pedophilia. Certain violent offenses and certain sex offenses are statutorily excluded, and the person must be able to be safely treated in a community setting without posing an unreasonable risk of committing certain violent felonies. If an individual is granted diversion and that individual continues successfully in treatment for a period of up to two years, their case is dismissed and sealed. Finally, victim restitution may be ordered during the period of, rest of diversion. Since this law went into effect in July of 2018, we have had approximately 60 individuals granted mental health diversion in San Diego County for charges ranging from low-level misdemeanors to serious felonies. Generally speaking, the defense is responsible for providing and arranging for the treatment plan, and it is up to the individual judge granting diversion to supervise the participant's progress, regardless of whether that judge, defense attorney, or prosecutor have any expertise in mental health issues. Additionally, what we have seen in practice here locally is that in some cases, justice-involved individuals with financial resources are able to provide more in-depth treatment plans that someone who is uninsured or underinsured cannot provide. This has led to gaps and disparity in access to mental health diversion. This program will remedy this and increase our ability to safely divert individuals charged with higher level offenses because the program provides for structured treatment, housing, and supervision. When mental health diversion was enacted, it also came with a source of funding from the state that was to be proportioned based on a county's referrals from the criminal justice system to the state hospital. The state's funding is only available for a subset of individuals, those that are charged with felonies, and only for those with a diagnosis of schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, or bipolar disorder. Partners from the District Attorney, Behavioral Health Services within HHSA, the Public Defender, the Sheriff's Department, the Public Safety Group, and the Court worked together to consider many different program designs that would allow us to safely offer mental health diversion to a population with serious mental health diagnoses and felony charges. 
The result was an agreement that we should model diversion after our already successful behavioral health court. Behavioral health court diversion will closely parallel what we know already works from our behavioral health court. However, there will be a few slight differences. Mainly for diversion, no guilty plea is required and the period of diversion is up to two years versus three years probation in behavioral health court. While we hope and want all of our participants to be successful, another really nice feature about this program design is that if an individual is not successful in diversion, there can be an opportunity for that individual to transition into the traditional behavioral health court program where they can continue with their care, their treatment, and housing, and still ultimately get the benefit of a dismissal of the charges. The funding for this program will support treatment and housing for about 30 behavioral health court diversion clients at any given time over the contract period. The treatment includes, among other things, act level care, wraparound services, case management, life skills, medication management, benefits assistance, and community linkages. I want to point out, however, that judges may still grant mental health diversion outside of this program, so this is not the only way individuals with mental illness can be diverted from the criminal justice system. This is just one option. This discussion of cross-sectoral work involving healthcare and criminal justice highlights the need for more robust care coordination for the connective tissue making the continuum whole. While progress on the flagship Central Region Behavioral Health Hub has been slow during the COVID-19 pandemic. The service and operational design of a central region hub, coordinated operations at the San Diego County Psych Hospital, and development of a collaborative legal entity or joint venture offering new care coordination services continues. The latter, where costs are relatively low and potential impact on our key aims is high, has been the area of greatest focus. We've been holding meetings each week with our UCSD partners and are making progress in designing sustainable longitudinal care coordination that will improve the behavioral health issues of those with serious mental illness and that will mitigate COVID-19 risk among this vulnerable population. We hope to launch this component of our central region hub as had been the plan within the current calendar year. Events surrounding COVID-19 have made it especially painfully clear that our first responders need additional behavioral health support. The Ryan Mitchell First Responders Program was formally launched last week and is being run by Pathways, a community services organization in San Diego. This program cuts through still stubborn stigma around behavioral health by making peer supportive services immediately accessible and by enabling those to engage clients over sufficient time to draw connections to ongoing clinical care. We'll look forward to returning to this board with additional updates on how the program is performing. While calls for additional care coordination have been long-standing, they're often followed by questions about where people with greatest needs can get long-term support. We can stay connected to people, we can help them navigate, but what if there's no place to navigate to? In April 2020, your board, in partnership with the City of San Diego, established a Behavioral Health Impact Fund for capital projects to support the behavioral health continuum of care by enabling organizations to increase their capacities to provide longer-term care. The request for proposals was issued in May 2020, highlighting opportunities to develop enhanced behavioral support homes, temporary and or transitional housing and support for people with substance use disorder, homeless populations with behavioral health services needs who are victims of commercial sexual exploitation, residential treatment services, and information technology to support telehealth, data integration, and innovation. The submission period closed on June 20 fifth and was successful with promising proposals offered for consideration. Funds for this program are expected to be awarded early in fiscal year 2021 with services operational within 18 months. There are a couple of important updates I want to give that don't fall into the categories we've organized this presentation around but that are still important. First, in February, your board approved a series of recommendations to support local oversight of opioid treatment programs or OTPs to ensure best practices are utilized and the highest quality of care is provided to those served by the county. We've made advancements in several critical areas. A county employee has been designated as the local opioid treatment authority. OTPs were directed to revise their community outreach plans to include robust engagement events and proactive community relations. An OTP quality data dashboard to support quality improvement is under development. And OTPs were able to shift 
to a take-home model of service delivery, allowing them to reduce the daily flow of clients. The LODA, Local Opioid Treatment Authority, and executive leadership at BHS have met with community groups and program leadership where issues with community clinic interface have been especially challenging and have mapped out processes for determining common metrics of success so that all parties are agreed about what improvement means and agreed about how to measure it. A second initiative, also in Oceanside, has also progressed. You'll recall that on January 14th, 2020, the board approved final agreements between the county and Tri-City for the development and operation of a 16-bed psychiatric health facility on vacant land located at the Tri-City Medical Center campus. Design of the facility has moved forward as planned and construction of the new facility is slated for completion in late 2020. We anticipate that this structure with its innovative and striking design will be seen as an asset by North County residents. There's obviously a great deal going on across the behavioral health continuum of care. And there is much on the horizon with the decisions to be made about behavioral health impact fund services and procurements to go out regarding CARES Act funding designated to support behavioral health. You can see in this graphic that the projects I've mentioned fall out along an extended and aggressive timeline. As these activities continue to evolve along with the epidemiology of COVID-19 and health system and county responses, certain key items will be on hold for the immediate term. These include the North Inland Regional Behavioral Health Hub, part of a planned partnership with Palomar Health, along with behavioral health hubs planned as future partnerships with the prime health system in the South and East regions. The latter will involve relatively little capital expense and continues to be next in line for detailed planning. Also, while an RFI for services was completed in January for the North Inland Integrated Behavioral Health Center in Escondido, the project will require extensive investments in capital infrastructure and therefore has also been delayed along with a separate procurement for an additional 16 crisis residential beds in North County. All of these activities are important to the transformation of our behavioral health continuum and to meeting the increasingly urgent behavioral health needs of our communities. As we continue to develop plans for optimizing diversionary, long-term, and care coordination services with an eye on re-engaging hospital partners in hub-related work in the future, we aim to make programmatic and investment decisions with health equity across race, class, gender, and geography in mind. In future updates to the board, these critical considerations will be highlighted. For the time being and for all, we remain steadfast in our mission to shift from a system of care driven by perpetual crisis toward one driven by continuous care. In support of the continuum of care activities, this presentation addresses two recommendations for your board. The first one is for item number two, if I may speak on behalf of the public safety group, to authorize the deputy chair Chief Administrative Officer, Public Safety Group, to execute a contract with the Department of State Hospitals to accept funding in support of a new mental health diversion program. The second is for item five, to receive the quarterly update on advancing the behavioral health continuum of care through regional collaboration and innovation. This concludes our presentation, subject to any questions. Thank you. Let me ask if there are any uh, questions on the uh, part of the Board of Supervisors to Dr. Luke or uh, any of the other uh, uh, folks that are part of this presentation. Hearing none, I do know that we have uh, our District Attorney, Summer Steffen, that is uh, here prepared to speak, I believe, on both item number two and number five. And if she's available, we'll go ahead and call her up at this time. Um, hi, good morning, uh, Chairman Cox, and good morning, Supervisor, CAO, and Board. Um, I'm going to focus uh, on item number two this morning, uh, as it's a new item uh, that has not been presented to this board before. Many of the um, incredible items uh, that are uh, the number five item have, have received everyone's attention. So this is, uh, comes out of the blueprint as recommendation number eight. Uh, they're not in order of importance. Um, and today moves that along from uh, just a plan to, to an actuality. As we know, just to put it in context, Rachel Solov did an incredible job uh, presenting the item 
but as you know, we have to balance the health and compassion for those who suffer from mental illness with the safety of the public. And this is exactly the approach that is being taken here combined with the fact that we must emphasize access to the treatment and equality of all participants. What we saw is the, the legislature passed the mental health diversion bill, but it did not come with funding initially and uh, it allowed persons that had wealth and insurance to offer the court a program for their treatment, a program that allows them to have housing and treatment. But we didn't have those same options for everyone in our county. And in the spirit uh, and the mission to provide equal justice, we sought this funding from the state and because of the excellent collaboration that is the hallmark of San Diego, where a concrete plan was presented, combined with the district attorney support, the HHSA support, the courts that have been incredible in San Diego in supporting this track and the board, uh, everybody coming together and the public defender to fashion a plan that would work and a plan that would address all three things that intersect with at least one third of our criminal justice system, homelessness and mental health. And because of that, this program is fashioned to uh, treat, to keep the community safe, to provide housing and proper supervision. And with that combination, it allows serving 30 individuals, regardless of wealth or anything else, equally in our system. Uh, we've already trained our team in this, and uh, thankfully, Dr. Luke Bergman didn't charge us anything because we're in a budget crunch, and we were able to provide that training so that our district attorney team is ready to go in order to assess and properly balance and manage a caseload that intersects with mental health at this high level. Thank you so much for your support. And this is an exciting uh, new adventure and step for San Diego County. Very good. Thank you, Summer. We really appreciate your uh, involvement in this whole issue and your leadership in particular. And I also want to acknowledge uh, Rachel Solo from your office who was a part of the last presentation also. So thank you very much. Uh, let me ask the clerk, oh, uh, Supervisor Desmond, you have uh, a question? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I wanted to say, you know, uh, thank you to our staff and everybody involved. This is really a big deal. This is, this is good. It, you know, considering that three, the first three floors of our downtown jail are serving inmates with mental health issues. Um, I'm extremely hopeful that the felony mental health uh, diversion program will help address the behavioral health crisis in our jails. Uh, this program will serve those who are with severe mental illness, who have pled guilty and agreed to a collaborative court process with probation and treatment. And, you know, we've all been convinced that sitting in jail when you have schizophrenia or a bipolar disorder is not going to cure or re rehabilitate someone with mental illness. Uh, jail just sometimes exacerbates the problem. So medication, therapy, and personal responsibility coupled with probation, mandatory check-ins will go much further in rehabilitating someone with severe mental illness. So I wanna commend our district attorney, Summer Steffen, Sheriff Bill Gore, our public defender, Randy Mize, our probation department, behavioral health and uh, human services agency, public safety group uh, for making this program a reality. You know, this has been a long time coming. People have been working very, very hard on it. I think this is a great program moving forward. And I wanna commend staff and everybody involved. This is really big, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, we, um, let me ask the clerk if we have any speakers on item number two. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We had uh, one request to speak in favor of item two. That caller has not called in. We have two requests to speak on item five. Uh, one of those callers is available. All right, why don't we go ahead and take action on number two first. We have two recommendations on item two uh, to authorize the Deputy Chief Administrative Officer Public Safety Group to execute a contract with the Department of State Hospitals to accept funding up to 3,328,000 for 
for the term of July 15th, 2020 through June 30th, 2023 for a pretrial felony mental health diversion program and to execute all required contract documents, including any extensions, amendments, or, or revisions thereto. They do not materially impact either program or funding level. And then the second recommendation is to war waive uh, board policy B29. Is there a motion to approve that uh, recommendations? Oh, no, Mr. Chairman, and I would like to make some comments on item two and five. I guess I can do that now, or I can wait for the speaker on five. Uh, why don't you go ahead and, and let's, let's deal with item two, and we'll clear that off the deck, and then we'll deal with item five. Yeah, I I'll can, first, I'll I want to... I, I want to compliment our district attorney, Summer Stefan, and her staff. I mean, this she's been the champion for what I would consider to call a very creative solution uh, to a real serious problem that we have. And the diversion program, uh, working collaboratively with the sheriff and the public defender and probation department, HHSA, Superior Court, to provide this treatment option, Summer, I don't know how you did it working with all of those groups and coming to a very, very significant conclusion. This is a first for San Diego County. And it is, as Supervisor Desmond indicated, this is a really big deal. So I'll be anxious, uh, those 60 that are already a part of this program as, as was uh, indicated in the staff report, I'll be really anxious to hear how they're doing and to get a complete report. But Summer, thank you. I can't thank you enough. I mean, I consider you not only our district attorney, but our in-house psychologist, psychiatrist with your knowledge and your background and in, in bringing the mental health issues, the behavioral health issues and joining them with the criminal justice system. And Luke, you've also done an incredible job. And I think that gets to item number five and I'll wait on that. So thank you again. Yeah, we do have a motion from Supervisor Jacob, seconded by Vice Chairman Desmond. Uh, Supervisor Desmond, did you have any additional comments? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, and again, I would uh, add my compliments to, to Summer and her staff and the great job that they're doing. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a great item, great news, and it's nice to see uh, uh, funding coming through the state of California for this uh, program. If there is no further discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Chairman Cox. Aye. Supervisor Jacob? Aye. Supervisor Gaspar? Aye. Supervisor Fletcher? Aye. Vice Chairman Desmond? Aye. Chairman Cox, that motion passes unanimously with all board members being present and voting aye.